Hello YouTube, today I'm going to take this 1970's Archer Radio Shack uh, two-way wired or two-station wired intercom system uh, and I'm going to add uh, a do not disturb button on both of these with a signaling LED uh, as well as a switch to turn this on or off that way I can set the volume however I want so let's, uh, let's take a look all right, what you're looking at here is the inside of the master station. Uh, this is where the main components for the SIG or for the uh, intercom system itself are. Uh, I will disassemble this and we'll uh, look at here in just a second. All right, so we're on the inside of the main unit here, the master station. Um, as you can see here, here's the wheel. Uh, inside right here, uh, whenever it is turned on, that makes connection. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to break or I'm going to take this little piece off and I'm going to solder a wire across both of these and attach a and attach a toggle switch to it that way that I can set the volume however I want but whenever I'm ready to turn it on I can flip on the toggle switch. Uh, also what I'm going to be doing here so you have your connector here uh, I will be clipping this connector off and I will be attaching uh, a double pull, double throw switch onto that um, and then wires going out uh, and I'll be using a six conductor wire, a uh, six conductor telephone cable rather, <coughs> to transfer or to uh, connect both of these stations together. Uh, I will also uh, I believe. Oh, and I'll also be adding an LED uh, that will go on the other side of this. So we'll do a jump cut, and I'll get all this on the breadboard, and we'll test it out. All right. So this is everything put together on the breadboard. Uh, I know it looks very confusing, and I will go over it here in just a moment. So here is the master station here, uh, as you can see by the wheel there, and here is the power supply for the uh, intercom unit itself. This is just the back of one of the sets itself. I just use it to hold the toggle switches uh, for the time being there were already holes in the back. This is the power supply for the signals. Uh, so if you trace it through uh, yeah, if you go ahead and trace it through then you'll see that uh, here is uh, the lead out or one of the leads out from the master unit and it travels into this double pole switch and then travels back out to uh, this other switch over here which to this one right here uh, then this switch runs over here and connects to this brown lead here which runs back into this unit and then the other unit, the other lead is connected straight to the other unit. So, and that's that's how that's as simple as it was before. So then you get into these green wires here. As I said before, these switches, as far as the green wires go, are wired in parallel to each other, but the signals themselves are wired in series. So you have this unit over here, or th this particular switch running over here, and this one has one also running over here. They're joined together with this yellow lead which connects to the LED here. And then it runs over here, connects this LED to this resistor which runs across over to the power supply, to the negative end of the power supply. The positive, no it runs over to the positive end of the power supply, I, supo I apologize. Uh, then the negative end of the power supply runs over here and gets connected to both of these uh, which one runs to each switch. So to give a brief demonstration uh, of how this unit will work, uh, and I have not gone ahead and added the switch for this. Uh, after drilling the holes, I went ahead and drilled the holes for the unit itself. Everything works out nicely. Um, 
due to the size uh, of the uh, switches that I was using, they were not going to fit, so I did have to order a small um, self-locking single pole switch. Uh, that will be here soon enough. I will go ahead and demonstrate, demonstrate how that will work, uh, but I'll do that here in just a bit. So to give a demonstration, so if I go over here to this one, you can see that it, they do call each other. When one switch is thrown, so this is the remote switch and this is the master switch. When one switch is thrown, both LEDs come on. There will be one at each station. Uh, and I cannot, as you can see, I cannot call the other station. This one does make a noise, but only on its size, on its side. But this one cannot call the other one. If you flip a switch back in the off position, communication is made again. If both switches are thrown, then they no longer work. And if the other, if the first one switches it back on, they still uh, do not make uh, connection. This is exactly what I was looking for. Uh, and then we, I will show here in just a moment everything put back together. Uh, I, I will demonstrate this one with one of the toggle switches, but it won't be mounted. Uh, and I will have to add to that uh, later whenever I do a final review of everything when I get to the new uh, building. So we'll do a quick jump cut and I'll have everything back in uh, the units. I do want to go ahead and show you both of these units with the holes drilled. So I went ahead and put the LEDs in here. Uh, it did kind of break the plastic off a little bit there, but it is very minor. Um, it did a little da more damage with the bigger hole here for the toggle switches, but uh, there will be a nut that will actually go over that to cover that up. So here's the master switch, here is the remote, uh, the LED will be there, and the switches will be over here. I was originally going to put the button here, but due to uh, the space between the, the PC board uh, and this, there wasn't enough space for that. So I went ahead and tried and measured to place one here. I drilled the hole already, um, but when I came to actually putting it, putting the board back down, there wasn't enough space between the uh, uh, potentiometer there and the button. So that little but that little uh, push button that I ordered, uh, that one will definitely work. Uh, I should have done, should have measured twice, cut once, but you know, sometimes uh, accidents do happen. But uh, I am very pleased with the way that this looks, and I'll get this all together. All right, so I have finally got this finished up. I it took me longer than I anticipated. I had to do some troubleshooting. Uh, I did have some issues. I'm actually not going to show the button working with the toggle switch just to, to show how that works. Uh, I will do an update later on the whole system uh, with the button in place. Uh, but it's finally all set up. I will go ahead and open up the inside in a little bit. You can see my somewhat mess there. But you can see the two LEDs are here and the toggle switches are here. I've got the new cables in. Uh, they're actually not... Uh, modular jacks there, uh, but the end of the wire, whenever I, I have ordered a uh, modular jack crimper, and I have some, but I've just kind of got them wired together and taped together at the moment, just to show uh, the system working. So, when the lights are off, that means that the system is uh, ready for use. So, each station can be called, as you can see here. And, you know, if I separate them apart, it's hard to do with these really long cables. Uh, but I can turn it on, and, and you can hear the reverb there. So you can see that they are functioning uh, still the same. So if one of these switches are thrown, uh, or both switches are thrown, the LEDs come on and communication is lost. So if I press this one, this one will always make noise. It'll just be a quieter one, but so I use this one as the demonstration. So if I throw one of these switches, both LEDs come on, as you can see, and communication is lost. I can no longer talk. Once it is, once the lights are off, communication is restored. Same for the other side. This one makes a really quiet noise. When you press it, that's just because it's the master and has the battery. If both switches are in the do not disturb position, nothing changes. And then so, uh, I don't remember which one I threw in first, but let's say that 
let's say that in the instance that I'm using it that my roommate throws his switch and then while his is still on I decide you know I'm gonna be working as well I don't want him to be able to flip his off and just call me uh, so I can flip mine on too and let's say he finishes up early and restores his back to normal use he still cannot contact me so it takes both parties to make communication with this particular setup so I really like this a lot uh, it'll be much nicer when I can get when I get the crimper and I can get the uh, the jacks on there and as you'll see in the next week or so the video that I make uh, about the wire management for the room for the telephone system as well as the intercom system here how it's all integrated together it'll be really nice I am gonna leave these uh, this probably has this was a 25 foot six conductor cable uh, some of it was lost in the process but I'm using about half and half on this so I would say there's probably a good 10 feet for each of these cables I'll probably cut that down to maybe seven each we won't need that much but I like to have more cable I like to have more than I need you know uh, so so yeah I I really I really like the way this is set up it's really nice well let's let's look at the back of one of these we'll look back at the master first so the wires as you can see so the wires come in here uh, the black one here is the is part of the conduct or part of the uh, communication line and this red cable here uh, this one particular right here get my pencil uh, that one runs into the switch and then this white wire is the communication line that runs all the way around and that's connected to the other side of the switch so when the switch is thrown the communication is cut and then the black is so the black from this communication just goes straight over to the other unit this yellow wire here that is one of the transfer uh, conductors for the signal this one in particular is connected to the switch as as uh, in addition to the green one there the green one is connected to the switch here as in and the other one the yellow one is connected to the switch uh, so in this instance the yellow one is connected straight to the LED uh, that's because they're in parallel that's so that when one switch is thrown uh, they both light up and when the other switch is thrown they still stay on um, and then the blue one that runs in from here uh, on both sides that connects straight to the LED um, the LED is over here underneath its battery pack as you can see uh, I just drilled a hole and just kind of stuck it in there I would like to get some hot glue and get that more set in um, but I may do that at a later date right here is the hole right here is where the hole is for the button uh, as soon as that comes in <laughs> they just sent me a notification actually that they shipped it so that was pretty quick but as soon as that comes in I will do an update um, I don't really know anything else uh, so in this instance where they're wired in parallel um, from the switch to the yellow uh, just, just another blue wire and then the blue wire that runs all the way over to the LED is what connects these two over to the remote I put this on backwards okay that's all right so here like I said the yellow one now is running over to the switch there is a blue wire coming off of that switch uh, that ties the green and the other blue that runs over to the LED the white runs over to the switch and in this instance instead of red it is brown but that is connected in the switch there and those two wires are connected and again the black wire that you can see right here uh, that one is wired straight over to the other device and this particular and this blue wire here is wired straight to the LED to connect it the battery pack is here I actually uh, the battery pack is right here I actually did not have a connector for this so I took some of the wire and tied those together and then this was from um, a dead 9 volt battery that I had saved some money but uh, underneath here is the LED and then a resistor right here that is a 1.8 uh, K resistor yeah, if, if you uh, if anyone was curious 
Um, but that is the whole setup. Uh, very simple. Very, very simple to make, very easy to use. Um, and I just really like that added feature. It is just very, very nice, very convenient. And I can't wait for it to be integrated into the phone system uh, that we'll be using next year. But uh, that's it for today. Check, Like I said, check back in the next little while. Uh, and there should be some updates on the room set up for next, for, for next semester, as well as the phone line and the wire management and whatnot. So uh, I'll see you next time.